There are several grafting methods you can use to graft grapevines in early spring. In this video, I will cover in detail which methods are the best in different grafting situations. When using one or two years old rootstocks, all of these methods work well. You can even graft young cuttings from older vines and root them afterwards using one of the rooting methods I show in the channel. However, since dedicated rootstocks are more resistant to soil-borne pests and can adapt to different climatic and agricultural conditions, one option is buying inexpensive young vines grafted to the desired type of rootstock and replace the grafted variety. I bought a few cheap grafted vines and I will be regrafting them to reuse the rootstock. I will be grafting new varieties, very resistant to fungal diseases, so I have to make the most of the limited grafting material I received. Since the available grafting material is far from ideal, choosing the best grafting technique in each case is crucial to the graft success. One important point is checking to see if the scion is in good condition, as grapevines have a tendency to dry out from the top after the growing season. You can simply scrape the scion to see if it's green. If the scion is dry or diseased, discard it, or check other areas to see if parts of the scion are usable. If the rootstock has a branch of the grafted variety with a similar size to your scions, you can use a cleft graft or the whip and tongue graft directly on that branch. Although it's a bit more difficult to execute, I usually prefer to use the whip and tongue technique since it provides many more cambium contact points. So, this technique has a much higher rate of success even if the execution is very far from perfect, as you can see in this graft. In the cleft graft, failure to match or cross the cambium lateral points will result in graft failure much more often. Even with the irregular cuts, and the poor adjustment between scion and rootstock, this graft was successful. Applying pressure when tying the graft and making sure the graft union is well covered can minimize much of those problems. What can result in graft collapse is failure to release the excessive pressure from the flowing sap. Grapevines that have left dormancy can produce a steady flow of sap under pressure that will prevent graft union healing and that can drown your graft, particularly if it's completely covered with parafilm. Removing the parafilm might not be enough, as the flow of sap from the root system will continue directly after graft union, as you can see here in this soaked raffia. Making a few cuts at the base of the rootstock usually helps to reduce the pressure and prevent this problem, avoiding graft failure. When grafting larger diameter rootstocks with thinner scions, the modified cleft graft has no rivals. The most difficult part of the technique is to avoid applying too much pressure to the knife when making the vertical cut near an edge of the rootstock. The cut near an edge is much narrower than a cut in the middle of the rootstock as in the conventional cleft craft. 
This way, most medium diameter scions will fit perfectly into this slot with perfect cambium contact without needing any cambium adjustment. When making the bevel cut in the scion, try to avoid a curved slope or the scion won't adjust properly. Making the back cut might help to reduce the slope. If it's not enough, try to straighten it as much as you can, but avoid partial cuts, starting always above the existing cut. The ideal cut should be completely straight with a small back cut at an angle. If the scion is too narrow for the slot, push it to one side and skew it a bit so it crosses the side of the rootstock cambium at some point. Amazingly, even when positioned at the center, a narrow scion will start to heal with the rootstock, probably due to the cambium contact at the back cut. This is why this grafting technique has such a high percentage of success and it's one of my favorites. Another option when the scion is too narrow is using a single bud and the chip bud or T bud grafting techniques. In early spring, the flow of sap is usually not enough for the bark to slip well, so the chip bud technique is the only option. The only disadvantage of this technique over tea budding is the need to protect the bud much more effectively since the chip can't be placed inside the bark. When changing varieties in older grapevines in the field, you can use all the techniques mentioned and a few more. One interesting option is using a modified whip and tongue technique that will allow grafting a thinner scion to the side of a larger diameter rootstock. After inserting the scion, be sure to adjust it, so the cambium layers overlap or cross at one side of the cut on the rootstock. Another alternative is using a double craft graft, placing two scions in the middle of the rootstock. Nevertheless, with the small scions of the varieties I have to graft, the better option is still the modified cleft graft.
This double graft will heal much better, as the double cleft would leave an empty space in the middle of the rootstock. Use flexible tape to cover any open spaces between the scions and the rootstock. Finish by covering the graft with pruning paste to avoid water and air to enter the graft. If it's more convenient, you can also graft a well-placed small branch of the old variety with the same techniques. Nevertheless, be prepared to remove all buds that might grow at the base of the graft or at other points of the old variety as they might divert the sap from the graft, causing its failure. Bud grafting is also possible in older grapevines. The technique is the same, although with the wider diameter of the rootstock, the chip adjustment will not be possible or necessary. Check to see if the bark will allow the use of the debudding technique. If the bark isn't slipping yet, use the chip budding technique instead. You can also place a bud in a branch of the old variety, but since you have to wait until the bud starts to grow to remove all the growth above the graft, the potential for undesired buds to develop below the graft will make managing the future plant much more complicated. When using tape to secure the chip, don't cover the bud. As the graft is well protected by the tape, using parafilm to cover the bud in the field might not be necessary, and can even arm the bud, as it has the potential to produce a greenhouse effect when not covered with aluminium foil. After 3 weeks, all the buds are showing signs of development and a few are even starting to break the parafilm. After 4 weeks, the first leaves are starting to appear. Thanks for watching. If you appreciate my work, like, subscribe, share the video and leave a comment to help me make more. Click the bell to receive notifications of new videos.